الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قد سلم ربه في الهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله صلى الله عليه وسلم تبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح للامه وجاهد في سبيله حتى اتاه اليقين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الا وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار I bear witness that there is none worthy of our worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of the prophets and the final messenger to all of humanity. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none to misguide. And whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves to go astray, there is none to guide aright. Awrada ibn Kathir rahimahullah fi bidaya wa nihaya قصة عن فتح مدينة تستر وهي في بلاد فاس. قعد أن فتحها المسلمون يعني قام أهلها بجمع الجيوش وكان للهجوم على الدولة الإسلامية في خلافة عمر رضي الله عنه. فجهز جيشا وأرسله إليه فحاصر المسلمون أهل تستر الذين احتموا بقلعة فيها سنة ونصف. 18 شهر وهم يحاصرون القلعة. في النهاية يعني بعد معارك كثيرة وكذا الحمد لله فتح على المسلمين. فكان أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه إذا ذكر فتح تستر كان يبكي حزنا. طب ليش حزنان يعني حاجة كويسة؟ الفتح والنصر شيء طيب. فالقصة أيضا لها يعني أثر في صحيح البخاري. فقال انس بن مالك رضي الله عنه يقول ان فتح هذا المكان المحصن هذا الحصن بدا قبيل الفجر واستمر بعد طلوع الشمس يعني خلصوا على الساعه 9 الساعه 10 فكان يبكي لضياع صلاه الفجر على المسلمين في 30000 مسلم دخلوا الحصن وحاربوا 150 الفا وانتصروا عليه كان يبكي ويقول: وما فائده تستر اذا كانت ضاعت علينا صلاه الفجر. فيقول صلاه الفجر هي خير من الدنيا وما فيها ولذلك كان يبكي لضلاع الصلاه عليه مره واحده في حياته، فكل كلما ذكرها كان يبكي. ابن كثير نريد من his book البدايه والنهايه the beginning and the end the story of the opening or the conquest of Tustar which is a city and a fort in Persia. So the Muslims during the time of Omar anhu, they took over Persia and he heard that the Persians were mobilizing an army to kick Muslims out and take over the Muslim Khilafah at the time. So he mobilized an army and he sent, sent it to Persia and the people in that city, Tusta, they, shook, they took shelter in that fort in the city. 150,000 people and soldiers were inside that fort or that city that was fortified. For 18 months, Muslims were trying to conquest this fort and open it, but they couldn't. Eventually, after dua and salah and all these things, they were able to open the city. So it's a great victory. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, a great victory. Nobody is going to attack the Khilafah or anything. Alhamdulillah, they are safe now. But every time, and there is a narration in Sahih Bukhari that talks about this story, Every time Anas ibn Malik remembered what happened that day, he used to cry out of sadness. I mean, somebody, some people, they cry when they're happy, but he was sad because of that picture. Why? He said, we started the offense a little bit before Fajr, and we finished after sunrise, so I missed Fajr for the first time in my whole life. And this is why he used to cry. And he had an excuse to miss it. It's not like he was playing video games or he was doing <coughs> sitting at Tim Hortons or anything. No, he was in the battlefield protecting himself, protecting the Muslims, and so there was an excuse. And he used to say, what is the value of opening the city of Tusta if it caused us to 
to lose Salat al-Fajr. What is the value of this victory? So he was sad that they missed Salat al-Fajr. All of us, now you know what I'm going to talk about. And I wish I didn't have to talk about this topic because, I mean, I see the need not to talk about it because it's very obvious, but I came to a point where I have to talk about it. A lot of people, they miss Salat al-Fajr willingly or unwillingly, intentionally or unintentionally. I know some people, they have to work long hours and so on and so forth. They know they have to pray before sunrise and whatnot. But some people, they miss it unintentionally because they think that the time window for Fajr is all the way from Fajr until Salat al -Fajr. But this is wrong. The Salat, the end time, or the deadline for Salat al -Fajr ends with sunrise. So if you pray Fajr after sunrise, it is just like praying Vod after As. It's exactly the same thing. So you have to make sure that you pray it before sunrise. And if you are not able to pray Fajr now, in the winter time, Isha is one time around 6.30, almost throughout the winter, Fajr is around 6.30, you have 12 hours between Isha and Fajr. I, I don't know about you, if you're not able to catch Fajr, if you have these uh, long hours to sleep at night, what are you going to do in June, June and July? Just forget it, okay? You can't. Now you have no excuse. Alhamdulillah, you have long light, you can sleep, you can do whatever you want, but make sure you pray before sunrise. It's that simple. When people read the ayat in the Quran, in Surah Maryam, and in Surah Al Ma'un, they talk about those who neglect salat. Salah. 
in light and the malaika are witnessing you, he will make a witness for you on the day of judgment. Yes, we witnessed him praying in the masjid at that time. So the first virtual reward of Salat al-Fajr, praying in time, number one, if you are looking for life insurance, then you should pray Fajr on time. This is what Rasulullah says in the hadith, the Sahih Muslim, man salla al fajr fi jama'ah, or subha fi jama'ah, fa huwa fi dhimmatillah. Dhimmatillah ya'ni, and fi himayatillah, fi himallah. So the Prophet says, whoever prays Fajr on time is under the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you are covered. You don't have to worry about anything. And this is the Sahih Muslim. If you want to get the reward of going for Hajj without leaving your house or without leaving the city, pray, pray Fajr in Jama'ah. Sahih al-Nabi, Yaqul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man salla al-Fajr fi Jama'ah, thumma qa'ad yadhu Allah hatta tatwa al-Shams, thumma salla raka'ataini, فكان له حجة يعني أجر حجة من عمرة تامة 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 ثلاث مرات صحيح جدا. so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says who if if you pray fajr in جماعة in congregation then you sit in the masjid to remember Allah to say ذكر or recite Quran or study Islamic knowledge then you pray two rak'at after sunrise then you get the reward of حجة and عمرة complete 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 so you get the full reward. If you do this in Jama'ah, and I would not say for men this is in the masjid, but for sisters, some of them, in order not to deprive the sisters from getting the same reward, those who are not able to go to the masjid because of the children and so on and so forth, they say if she prays in Jama'ah in her house with her children or family members, then she sits in the house to remember Allah until sunrise, then she prays to Raka'ah for Duha she will give the same reward of Hajj and Umar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kareem wa yurja la athawab ala ba'i ba'ad al-ramah. So you give the reward of Hajj and Umar without leaving the comfort of your city. But don't ask people to call you Hajji because you are not. You only give the reward but you don't give the title. This is the only, this is the only difference. In Hadith al-Sahih, Sahih Muslim, يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى العشاء في جماعة فكأنما قام نصف الليل ومن صلى الفجر في جماعة فكأنما قام الليل كله. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says in this authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim that whoever prays عشاء in جماعة will get the reward of standing half of the night in salat. But if you pray fajr in جماعة in congregation, you will get the reward of standing the whole night in قيام قيام الليل like تهجد and شفع الوتر and all these things just for praying صلاة الفجر if you want to go to Jannah then you need to pray صلاة الفجر and صلاة العصر the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول في الحديث صلاة الفجر البخاري ومسلم من صلى البردين دخل الجنة البردين اللي هم العصر والفجر the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says in Bukhari and Muslim that if you want to go to Jannah first class then make sure you pray Asr and Fajr on time. So if you pray Asr and Fajr on time, guaranteed you will go to Jannah. The best thing and the best reward that you can ever think of with regards to Fajr is it will lead you to see the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi Jannah. In Hadith Sahih, Jarir ibn Abdullah, radiallahu anhu, fi Bukhari wa Muslim, يقول كنا جلوسا عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في ليلة مقمرة فنظر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى البدر أو إلى القمر في ليلة التمام يعني في البدر وقال إنكم سترون ربكم كما ترون هذا البدر لا تضامون في رؤيته يعني لا تمنعون من رؤيته أو لا تحجبون فإن استطعتم ألا تغلبوا عن صلاة قبل طلوع الشمس وقبل غروبها ففعلوا the best reward for Salat al-Fajr is looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. And of course, if you look at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah, this means that His Rahmah will be showered on you and you will never be punished. Now you got a guarantee that you will be in this na'im forever. So, Jareel ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated in Bukhari and Muslim that we were sitting with the Prophet in a night 
and it was around the middle of the month when the moon was full. So the Prophet looked at the moon and said, You will see your Lord on the day of judgment just like you are able to see the moon tonight. Nothing will prevent you from seeing it. If you are able to pray Salat before sunrise and before sunset, then do. So he's talking about Salat al Fajr and Salat al Asr. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Alima and the Father of the Father of Alima and Salah.
اللهم عليك بمن ظلم المسلمين في انهم لا يعجزونك، اللهم ولي على المسلمين في رب ولا تولي عليهم شرهم، اللهم ولي عليهم من يصلح وليصلح ومن يحكم فيهم شرعك ويتبع هذه نبيك، وصلي اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين وقضي الصلاه.